Yo, how y'all doing, Arthur Scott? Come here to kick another verse from the top. Hit you with the knowledge that you could say I drop off the roof like a piano. Huh. They don't want you reading. They'd rather you be a stupid mammal. <laughs> they don't want to see you smiling. Rather you plaque out with enamel. <laughs> Back to the book. Let me get the reading before it gets misunderstood. You know I started off coming like a boss, man. You see me chalk talk. Outlaw. Denied me my squaw. Ah, Y'all don't know who we are. <laughs> Man, anybody want to collab on some music, holla at your boy. I'll kick a verse. <laughs> but, um, we're here to continue with, uh, pause that if you need. Uh, it's called Black God, an introduction to the world's religions and their black gods by Dr. Supreme Understanding. Like I always say, it sounds like one of them. No disrespect. But I've been jumping around and um, what the fudge? I gotta read that now. Oh, I gotta read that. I was, I gotta read that. I was planning on reading this down here, but then it says at the top of this page, the sacred cigarette. <laughs> if this ain't about the tobacco Indian, I don't know what is. I'll just read a little bit of it, because I'm already prepared, as you see my background, I'm already prepared to read what I planned on reading. They tried again several times, each time adding more wealth to their offering. Each time the messenger was rejected. The black god wanted none of the things the other gods prized. He didn't even rise from his seat on the floor before sending the messenger away. And then it goes to the sacred cigarette. Finally, Dantso, D-O-N-T-S-O, asked the people what they had offered him. He is not like other gods, said Dantso. He is surely and exclusively, no, but he is surely and exclusive. Few of his, few of the holy ones ever visit him, and he rarely visits anyone. He cares nothing for your sacred buckskins, your baskets, or your turquoise, and white shells, your abalone, abalone and rock crystals. All he wants is smoke. No joke. All my people want is smoke. But his cigarette must have been in very particular way must be made in a very particular way I know which way it's made come on now and then he told them how to make the cigarette sacred to hastisinzi h-a-s-t-s-e z-i-n-i but he made the people all pledge secrecy. He lived with the fire god, and thus he came to know how the cigarettes should be made and how it should be given to the god. Y'all could just chew on that and spit it back. See me here, kicking games, spitting raps. I'm trying to go to the next chapter. See me here, living here after. 
Yeah, you know how it be coming through with that gang. I be smoking my weed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The black creator of the Apache. The Jikaria Apache. That word. What I have written up there, that's what I just tried to say. I'm pretty sure I slaughtered it. Also recognize a group of mythical fi figures known as Hat Chin. I just put that there. The hot chin are supposed to, I'm guessing, be in here somewhere. Oh, that's New Zealand. I don't throw New Zealand in my mix because y'all telling the truth. <laughs> no. I don't know. That's the dog. Oh, shoot. I think I erased it. Nope. How does Archie buck? Uh, Apache? Archie? I don't know. I don't even listen to that type of music. Hip hop over here. Anyway, I was trying to find the deity. I didn't. So, let's go back to the Apache of that variety. Oh, snap, that might be my nigga. Okay, let's leave that there. Sorry, I got a beat to that song, and when I hear it, I just go into the lyrics. So, one second, and I'll get into the Apache. Y'all take in that, because that is what we are talking about. That. I'm gonna do it like I'm in the booth, watch. Microphone. Swined over into my consciousness, my psyche told me sink or swim. I didn't stretch before I took the dip, so could this be the end? Is every lesson learned a lesson lived or do I have the chance to skip? This white lady says she saw the help, and it changed how she viewed the world and understanding how I felt. That's bullshit, she looking for a free pass, so she don't have to speak on the past. So kiss my ass, see these bastards known to write off on taxes and change the facts, do the math. Cashing out on compassion behind the mask. Oh, man. Let me start fighting. Stop messing with y'all. All right. Those Apaches that I cannot pronounce their first name also recognize a group of mythical figures known as the Hak Chen. You see the word up there. Who are described as the only beings of the beginning of nothing. Uh, the only beings of the beginnings when nothing existed. Yet they possessed all necessary for the creation of the universe and all pertaining to it. The most powerful of these gods was known as Black Hachin, essentially Black God. In the creation myth of the world, David, David Adam Leemings, L-E-E-M-I-N-G, he writes, The Hatchin existed before creation, when there was only dark, wet chaos, the womb, as it were, being lonely, the Hatchin created the essential elements of the universe, as and also created earth mother and sky father earth mother sky father what up g 
brother came on. So, Earth Mother, Sky Father, Framer and Shaper. Hmm, let me think. Shaper to give form, so that would be seed, right? But the frame would, in a sense, be the womb it's created within. So is that male and female? I'm just brainstorming here. I ain't got nothing for y'all on that. Y'all have to hit me back. All right. Um, as for the people at this time, they lived, turning page, only as a potential form in the damp, dark underworld, where a figure called Black Hachin rules. Black Hachin was the true creator. <laughs> Dustin. What up, boy? Smack him. Oh, Ain't nothing, playboy. Trying to keep my head up. I went to the graveyard today. Oh, really? I went yesterday. Yeah, I had to go holler at my mom. I forgot it was her birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah, A.T. Monk, too, huh? A.T. Monk birthday just passed, too. Yeah, I missed A.T. Monk's. Where, A.T. Where is A.T. Monk buried? She back there. Huh. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to ask my mom. Uh, we was in that. We should have came that other day. We was there all day, drinking and smoking and talking all kinds of stuff with the uncles and all of them. Uh, it was just us back there, so you know it was. Yeah, getting fun. that up, getting that good knowledge. Yeah. But but they but they only had one of them that that was woke, like my daddy and uncle. They were, they still up in that yeah. kind of, you know, that mind state. But they had, you know, they got that one cousin that's talking about their ancestors and and burning, talking about, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, talk about altars and shit like that. Okay. Shoot, um. But, but, but they was all hating on them. You know how I go. They yeah. all started hating on them. People, you know people used to what one school of knowledge. They can't open their minds up to different perspectives. Yeah, you know, yeah. one track mind. Yeah, That's there you what go. I call it. Yeah, closed mind. Hey, love you. You're only seeing it one. You're only seeing the shit one way. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh wait. Oh, yeah, that, 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 I was right in the middle of a thought. Okay, so, shoot. Um, man, I want to like to keep him there. Hopefully he stays big so I can come back. But that would explain what they just said. That explains why when I type that in, Anubis comes up. Oh, my face is in the way. Uh, Anubis comes up. Now, they're saying the black underlord, this, that, and the other, but he is also the creator. It's the Anubis story or whatever. That old God and the devil being the same person junk, that's in the Sumerian tablets. From what I can see, all the where there's smoke, there's fire, all that is in the Sumerian tablets. So... Maybe I'll do a video on it one day. I probably will, just on the small section. But I understand why people fall into that crap. You know, or whatever you want to call it. So, to me, that makes sense why they showed Anubis and stuff. And now I jump back into the mix with you. Oh, wrong screen. This one over here. Dang it, come on. This one. Come on, quit playing with me. Y'all already know I got two screens. and The mouse will be over here and the mouse will be way over here. <laughs> Cursor, whatever. All right, so that's why I had to say that because I see why Anubis is there. So, y'all got me? Y'all got me. According to Dr. Harold F-U-C-H-S, I want to say something else. You know what I want to say. <laughs> so Harold F-U-C-H-S, Black Hickchen, Hockchen, created the original animal and bird 
from which all others derived and well as well as man and woman and Richard Willow's summary of the Jikaria Apache creation story man is made to take the place of the departing black creator Sumerian tablets that is in the Sumerian tablets I'm gonna have to do a video on that not that I follow it but I get how pieces and you know <laughs> crumping I don't know that one <laughs> alright but I get that in the beginning there was nothing but darkness water and the moving wind nothing lived except for the eternal spirits these spirits had great power the strongest of these spirits was Black Hat Chin. I, re I got way too much in my head because I want to say, oh, that's from... Let's just continue the story. Together, he and all the spirits made the earth. Yet he alone made all the birds and animals that lived upon it. One day, however, Black Hachin announced that he couldn't stay forever. So all the animals begged him to make someone similar to Hachin to take his place and keep them company. So Hachin ordered them to go gather materials from around the world to make man. When they were gathering all the materials, Black Hachin turned them into man. The black god then blew wind into this man to animate him. This man would resemble and represent the black hack chin who made him. End of section. The Papu Va. We should be familiar with this. I was just going to read that one part, but let's just get as much covered as we possibly can. So. Alright, we got y'all on the black chin. Here, the oh, wrong letter. There we go. Come on, get this incense out of my face, man. Put too much smoke, man. You're thinking more fire. My face, bless my nostril. Y'all for me to take in the wind. <laughs> I'm stupid. Uh, well, I don't know what story we're reading out of here so, yet, so let's just go here. Let's do with these people. Oh. 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 Man, y'all can't say, like, What's that picture in Egypt when they got like the four shades of the people and they're saying that's the different, you know, they got the Asiatic, they got the Egyptian, they got the Nubian, and they got a fourth one, and I don't know what he's supposed to represent. But, um, probably a Shemite of some sort. But, um, would this not be, in a sense, kind of like the same representation, but on this side of the world? I'm sorry, my face is always in the way. Open your face! Dark guy, light guy. Uh, I guess they both are yellow. What the fizzy? There's a face right there. You got the blue black homie right here. But there's a rope, there's a snake around his neck tied to a tree. Is that where they get the lynching? I'm not even gonna start. But you see, he's the palest one. And he got a little purple homeboy. Purple homeboy. Microphone's back here. Purple homeboy. Blue black with a serpent around his neck. And the serpent has what looks to be a rope around his neck. Is that a double lynching? It's not cool. We got the black brother here hanging with the jaguar, jaguar paw. Uh, and somebody is eating somebody. Some female is eating somebody. That's a, that's a teat. Or as we say in the south of Nepal. <laughs> you know, nobody says that. <laughs> Nobody that I am familiar with says that. Uh, Alright. 
Stop it. Now we're... I can wait. There's something in the car I need to go get. That can wait. Got y'all time. Only been 20 minutes. Uh, the Papuva has been described as one of the rarest relics of Aboriginal thought. It has been subtitled the Sacred Book of the Ancient Quiche Mayan. But, Quiche Maya, sorry. The Papuva contains the popular traditions and mythologies of the Mayan who lived in present-day Guatemala after the fall of the Maya em Old Empire. Old Empire. The Quiche say the Papuva is indeed an old book which ancient kings and lords would draw upon for inspirations, as well as prophecy and divination. It was first transcribed into Latin script in the Quiche language sometime between 1554, I don't know why that number is, I feel like that number means something to me, 1554 and 1558, between those years, it was translated from Quiche to Latin. Before this, it was preserved by a long history of oral tradition, the, or wait, oh, like the book was lost or something, because how do you say that? Before we translated a, I don't know, I'm lost in that. The, is is taking tradition from oral, is that translation or is that just writing down? Is that dictation? I'm lost because I thought that was an ancient book they found, if I'm not mistaken. But you're saying before y'all wrote in Latin. That it was or just oral. Uh, I might be. I'm misconstruing it probably. So let me just finish. Long ago, but it, it, but its sight is now hidden from the searcher and the thinker. That sounds like a drive through New Mexico right there. Who is the searcher and the thinker? You know, we got Framer, Shaken, Skyfather, Earth Mother. Who's the searcher and the thinker? Mm -hmm. Numerous versions of the book exist now, each offering slight differences in wording and interpretation. The version I purchased in Mexico described the first man being made of black clay. The author says the first man was imperfect, however, the nature the new creature had the gift of speech and sounded more harmonious than any music that had ever been heard before under the heavens. And for some reason I agree with that because when you go through the Strong's Concordance, it seems like everything having to do with uh, talk and God said, and the word is slipping me right now. I got too much going on in my life, man. Too much in my life, man. Won't take me long. I think it's Vio Mare, or Wayo Mare. I always get confused with that VW thing. Yeah, I got Wayo Mare. And that's, that's always used when God says this and or that. But I'm missing a page out of there. I'm gonna find that.
Yeah, I'm, make, I'm missing page 14 through 16. And my Hebrew translation, but I'm gonna have to get back to that. Um, but yeah, every time you go into the definition of way you'll marry or whatever, which is pretty much, you know, God said and Elohim said, um, or stated, commanded, it always has within the definition in some sort of parentheses to sing. Even when it's just Adam and, you know, well, yeah, when anybody says it, speech is related to song. So, I don't know, was us talking the way we talk, not now, but then unique to the heavens to the point it's like, oh, that voice. Oh, my. Hello. <laughs> Halito. Halito. Pronunciations, I've been working on it. Nigga been practicing. <laughs> All right, back to it. Drink more water, or you might die. <laughs> Mick Jenkins, if anybody checking that out, good positive music. Numerous, very. I already read that. <clears throat> Though the God would continue to make three more races of man before. For, uh huh. Noah's Ark in this piece. Three more races of men before finally arriving at one with which they were satisfied. The second and third were vi violently destroyed. The first, the black race, was allowed to live and given time to multiply and improve their kind. This is interesting, and I haven't found any mention of an original black race in the translations I've come across in the U.S. He bought his in Mexico. Mexico. Scholars have noted a line of cultural transmission from the Mayan people to the Indians of the American Southwest. The Papuva original black race may have some relation to the southwest indian story of the emergence of of the emergence a story Ranoko rashidi says is a important in the religion as the book of genesis is to print okay to their religion as the book of genesis is to christians in this creation story, the first world is called the Black World. I think I'm giving y'all everything y'all need to look it up and read the story for yourself. Y'all let me know. Uh, next section. Let's see how long it is. I had y'all for 28 minutes. It is not long at all. We could do this. Okay, I think the rest of the book is just going to be talking about, um, oh yeah. They give you a lot of sources. So if I've said anything that y'all question, I literally can give you the book, the volume, and this, that, and the other from which that was taken from. So they got a, this much of the book. Well, let me see. And at least 10 to 12 pages of just references and authors. So, y'all want something like, he said this part, I want to check that. I'll let you know where they took all these little quotes from, specifically if I haven't. You're gonna have to put it in the comments though. And be patient because you know I might not jump on it that day. But I'll jump on it. Alright. The Hopi Prophecy. Lee Brown. Another quote. I'm gonna find him if you need. A Salish. Indian from British Columbia, Canada, I don't know, had lived and studied among the Hopi for several years in 1986. Birth year in the house, dated myself. He gave a talk at the 
Continental Indigenous Council that should not be ignored. Brown Beginnings. I'm sorry, that's his last name. Brown begins with a commentary on the races of the earth, expressing a strong solidarity with black people. A Salish Indian from British. Okay, he's a S A L I S H Indian. I don't know what those are. I do not know what those are. All right, we got the Papa I think we're done with these guys. Last time for your memory. All right. What is up with them putting all this bull crap in my playlist? That's my jam, though. Not that, what I just clicked on. What a nigga know? Old school. KMD. Oh, okay. Salish Indian. British Columbia. Let's do it. I also got him in Montana. Okay. Okay. Chief Dan George. Oh, he just looked like he was prominent the way they had him zoomed in and stuff. begins a commentary on the races of the earth expressing a strong solidarity with black people. A medicine man from South Dakota put a beaded medicine wheel in the middle of the gathering. It had the four colors for the four directions. He asked the people, where is this from? They said, probably Montana or South Dakota. Maybe Sasquatchin, y'all gonna forgive me. S-A-S-K-A-T-C-H-E-W-A-N or H, there's a smudge on my page. Um, he said, this is from Kenya. I be having props all over the place. It just come to mind when I be thinking about it. <laughs> it is from Kenya. Good times. I'm from Louisiana. I'm like right next to New Orleans. Come on. No, not my soda, which I already drunk. So there's nothing in the cup. Yep. That's just a decoration mom gave me. You know how it is. That's Kenya, and I got another one from Kenya in there. Seems like all the pretty stuff's from Kenya. Um, this is from Kenya. It was beaded just like ours, with the same color. Always we were trying to live together, but instead of living together, you all know there was separation. There was segregation. They separated the races. They separated the Indians and they separated the blacks. Who is they if this is an Indian talking? Like one of them. 
No disrespect. If you holding it down, you holding it down. I ain't really on the shade game, but that depends on your approach. <laughs> um, what he says afterward is especially significant. In 1776, when the United States government printed the dollar in one claw of the eagle, if you ever notice, there is an olive branch in this claw. They said that represented peace. The Indian elders shared with me in South Dakota that to them, that represents the enslavement of black people. Got the olive, the black olive in the clutch of the eagle. Native just said it on you. So, there is an, I'm, re I'm rereading here for clarification purposes. I'm going to face the microphone just to let's make sure y'all got it. In 1776, when the United States government printed the dollar in one claw of the eagle, if you ever noticed, there is an olive branch in the claw. That said to represent peace. The Indian elders shared with me in South Dakota, in South Dakota, isn't that where like Rushmore is and stuff? In South Dakota, that wait, share with me in South Dakota that to them that represents the enslavement of black people. In the prophecies of the six, six nations, I'm sorry, no, that's right. In the prophecy of the six nations, people, I'm pretty sure there's of supposed to be in there. Of people, they say there will be two great uprisings by black people to free themselves. We've seen one in about 1964. There was one more uprising coming for the black race of people, and then they will be released. And this is also going to have an effect on the native people a good effect. Quit hating. All the Navajos I didn't talk to in the past couple, all the Choctaws who want to put me out, my people that I didn't talk to in the past, quit, stop, because I'm always thinking that. The second we kick through the door, the rest is better off. Stop playing. Uh, there was one more uprising coming for the black race of people, and then they will be released. And this is going to have an effect on the native people, a good effect. There's a whole new set of prophecies from the Iroquois people about that, and I won't have time to go into that this morning. That's because the guy's still talking. That's not me or the author. That's the Lee Brown, a Salish Indian from British Columbia, giving a speech in Canada in 1986 at the Continental Indigenous Council. All right. I can only imagine how much more there is to this prophecy. M.W. Smith, where you at? You know we be talking about the red man holding out information on us. But is it just because we've been so reckless that they be like, uh-uh, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. There ain't gonna be no string of events that prove to other races or whoever is in knowledge that we're ready. If there's any gatekeepers uh, for us, the key masters, to come through. You know what I'm saying? That's a dope. That's dope. Y'all know what I mean. Um, you know what I'm saying? But if somebody out there holding the gate, you know what I'm saying, in some sense of protection because they knew this downfall was coming, then I don't know. I can't say we ready either. Look at Chicago. No offense to anybody from Chicago. New Orleans got a few bad areas too. Houston. You know, Baton Rouge, ridiculous. You know, still a lot of good food in all those places, though. Respect, peoples. I'm just trying not to hate on nobody. But you get what I'm saying, man. Like, if y'all got junk like that and y'all mythologies, stop. If I, if I title this video properly, quote unquote, um, if I title this video in a certain aspect or way or whatever you want to call it, then I will be bombarded by red people like oh you ain't down oh you ain't down how you going uh-uh who your people is get the fuck out of my
my face, nigga. If I'm down for the cause, I'm down for the cause. That's all it is to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know there's more to it, but that's just later. You know, layers to the shit. If I put um, true Native American history, sin, somebody be like, you don't know nothing. <laughs> Who gave you permission to talk? <laughs> I'm going to quit playing with y'all. But I think that was all pretty dope. I think the sacred cigarette got something to do with some weed and just the fact that we're the tobacco Indians. Okay, this is just extra for fun. And cause it's short. But this is the beginning part to the black cigarette that I didn't even know was there. Sacred cigarette for the black guy. At the 12th annual meeting of the American Folklore Society in 1901, ethnographer, I don't know what that word is, E-T-H-N-O-G-R-A-P-H-E-R, -E Washington Mathers, retold a right myth of the Navajo Indians of New Mexico and Arizona. Right myths, he explained tell the story of how different rites and ceremonies came to be practiced by the groups of Navajo, by groups like the Navajo. I shall relate to you now. He continued in the words of a shaman, a brief myth of how a couple of the greatest div divinities of the Navajo pantheon were taken ill and how they were successfully treated by a minor divinity, Matthew begins. Uno, momentous, <laughs> Maximus. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. Aboriginal. <laughs> Pass the title, no. You ain't seen Chief Cleef new Porsche? <sighs> Welcome back to Poets Corner. <laughs> All right, um, we were about to drop that right myth. Mythologies of right. Page turn while I was gone, huh? Nobody said nothing? No, nobody? I'm just playing. Y'all aren't really here. <laughs> Are any of us really here? Matthews begins. It is long since the Navajos went to war, but in former days, when we fought our enemies, we often suffered from war diseases. Our young men know nothing of this. I bet y'all don't. No disrespect, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> uh. One who killed an enemy by striking him in the chest would get a disease of the chest. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wait, is it um something by any man? If anybody sheds the blood of man, by man his blood shall be shed. Cause in the image, you know what I'm saying. Reaping what you sow. Um. One who killed the enemy by striking him in the head would get a disease of the head, and one who killed by wounding in the abdomen 
would get disease in that part. What does the black god want? What do these have to do with each other? Oh, the war disease made the god so weak they could barely function. Nothing would cure it. Now we don't know if the war disease referred to cancer or some other condition that can affect different parts of the body. What we know is that there is still a right that aims to treat or prevent such ailments. And this right was introduced by a mysterious black character. The story continues. At length, someone said, there is one dwelling at T-S-E. Apostrophe. S-I-N-D-I-A-I. Black Standing Rock named Donso, an insect who knows of one who can cure war disease. So the people lay in wait for Donso, who is Donso, and caught him. I'm about to find out who Donso is. This is a Navajo hotel. Navajo hotel, so we look for Donso. I thought that was somebody's name when I read it early, earlier. Nah, be Joe. Nah, be Joe. There we go, something like that. <laughs> Nava Joe. Don. No, Don. So. Is the S first or second? Danzo. Don't so. Mm. Are we talking about the Navajo? Oh, Donso is, I guess Donso is an insect. I guess that's what they're trying to say. Uh... Anyway. Any Navajos out there? Break bread. Let me know what's popping. All right, so. Who is it that can cure the war disease, they asked. I dare not tell, said Donso. It is one whom I fear. Who does not like to have his powers known? But the people persisted and persuaded and threatened till at last Donso said, it is hot, see, I guess I'm typing that in. I was hoping I did not have to type that in. Anyway, that's what's in my book looking at me, so might as well show that. Dios de Fargo. So supposedly he can supposedly he can cure the war disease. The owner of all fire, but never let him know it was I who revealed the secret, for I fear his vengeance. And the rest leads up to the magic cigarette, which I pretty much already read. So that's how they get him to start helping with their diseases. He'd be like, Yeah, I'll hook you up, but um you got to bring me one of them cigarettes. 
Like, we got you a cigarette. Uh-uh, that ain't how you make a cigarette sacred. You have to bless that cigarette. I can show you how to bless it. But it's going to take about the harvest season. You know what I'm talking about. We're playing games with your boy. All right, man. I hope y'all taking care. I hope my volume is better than last time. Uh, suit up, choose up. I don't know. Just think of something positive. Stay positive. Be negative when you got to be. My theory is if you got to go to war, don't piss on the people. Don't piss on the graves as you bury the dead. All life matters, but things play out as they should. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs>